Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome back to the 17th installment of our Ramadan self-improvement challenge. Today we delve into the topic of fairness, exploring its significance in our journey towards personal growth and spiritual development. Be sure to subscribe to our channel to stay updated on future challenges and don't forget to show your support by liking the video and sharing your thoughts in the comments below. Let's embark on this transformative journey together. What is fairness? Fairness is the principle of treating all individuals impartially, justly and equitably regardless of their personal characteristics, background or circumstances. It involves upholding standards of justice and equality in decision-making process and actions, ensuring that everyone has equal opportunities and access to resources. Fairness encompasses notion of honesty, integrity and transparency where decisions are made based on objective criteria and without favoritism or discrimination. It acknowledges the inherent worth and dignity of each person and strives to create a level playing field where merit and effort are recognized and rewarded. Fairness is not only a moral ideal but also a fundamental aspect of a just and inclusive society fostering trust cooperation and social cohesion among individuals and communities. Fairness emphasized in Quran and Hadith O oh you who have believed, when you contact a debt for a specified term, write it down, and let the scribe write it between you in justice. Let no scribe refuse to write as Allah has taught him. So let him write and let the one who has the obligation dictate, and let him fear Allah, his Lord, and not leave anything out of it. But if the one who has the obligation is of limited understanding or weak or unable to dictate himself, then let his guardian dictate injustice. And bring to witness two witnesses from among your men. And if there are not two men available, then a man and two women from those who you accept as witnesses. So that if one of the women errs, then the other can remind her. And let not the witnesses refuse when they are called upon. And do not let to be too very to write it, whether it is small or large, for a specified term, that is more just in the sight of Allah and stronger as evidence and more likely to prevent doubt between you, expect when it is an immediate transaction which you contact among yourselves. For then there is no blame upon you if you do not write it. And take witness when you conclude a contract, let no scribe be harmed or any witness. For you, if you do so, indeed it is grave disobedience in you. And fear Allah, and Allah teaches you, and Allah is knowing of all things. This verse highlights the importance of fair documentation in financial transactions, ensuring that all parties are treated justly and that testimony is given without bias. O you who have believed, be persistently standing firm for Allah, witnesses injustice, and do not let the hatred of a people prevent you from being just. Be just, that is nearer to righteousness, and fear Allah. Indeed, Allah is acquitted with what you do. This verse emphasizes the importance of being just and fair, even if it may go against one's interests or those of loved ones, highlighting the paramount importance of justice in Islam. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, The judges are three. Two judges who judge correctly and receive two rewards, and one judge who judges unjustly and receive one sin. Now, listen to the short story about fairness, and after that we will talk about how to be fair. A Baker and the Butter A long time ago, a baker and a farmer lived in the same small English village. These two men had a friendly arrangement in place, where the farmer would sell a pound of butter to the baker each day. One morning, the baker decided to weigh the butter to see if he'd received the correct amount. To his surprise, he discovered that the farmer had sold him less butter than he'd paid for. Angry about the unfairness, he took the farmer to court. At the hearing, the judge asked the farmer whether he used any measure to weigh the butter. Your Honor, I am but a lowly farmer and do not own a proper measure. I simply use an old-fashioned scale, he replied. How do you weight the butter then? inquired the judge. To this, the farmer answered, Your Honor, long before the baker started buying butter from my farm, I've been buying a pound loaf of bread from him. Every day when he brings me the bread, I place it on my scale and give him the same weight in butter. If anyone is to be blamed, it's the baker. Morale of the story. Remember, treating others with kindness and fairness often leads to positive outcomes for oneself as well. How to become fair? 
becoming fair involves cultivating a mindset and adapting behaviors that prioritize justice, equality and impartiality in all aspects of life. Here are 10 steps you can take to become fair. Educate yourself. Learn about different perspectives, experiences and injustices that exist in society. Understanding various viewpoints can help you develop empathy and awareness of fairness issues. Examine your biases. Reflect on your own biases, prejudices and privileges. Recognizing and challenging these biases is crucial for promoting fairness and treating others equally. Practice empathy. Put yourself in others' shoes and try to understand their experiences and feelings. Empathy fosters compassion and helps you make fair and considerate decisions. Promote diversity and inclusion. Support diversity and inclusion in initiatives in your community and workspace. Encourage equal opportunities for everyone regardless of their background, ethnicity, gender or beliefs. Be just and honest. Strive to be fair and honest in your interactions with others. Base your decisions and actions on objective criteria and principles of justice. Listen and communicate. Listen actively to others' perspectives and concerns. Effective communication is essential for resolving conflicts and addressing unfairness. Stand up against injustice. Speak out against discrimination, oppression and unfair treatment when you witness them. Advocate for justice and equality for all individuals. Lead by example. Demonstrate fairness and integrity in your words and actions. Serve as a role model for others in promoting fairness and equality. Continuously improve. Be open to feedback and willing to learn from your mistakes. Continuous self-reflection and improvement are essential for fostering fairness in your interactions and decisions. Support fair policies and practices. Advocate for fair policies and practices in your community, workspace and society at large. Support initiatives that promote equality, justice and human rights for all individuals. In conclusion, fairness stands as a fundamental principle that underpins the fabric of just and equitable societies. It embodies the notion of treating individuals with impartiality, respect and dignity irrespective of differences in background, status or beliefs. Fairness promotes harmony, fosters trust and cultivates a sense of belonging among diverse communities. By upholding fairness in our actions and decisions and interactions, we contribute to the creation of a world where justice prevails, opportunities are acceptable to all and human rights are upheld. Embracing fairness is not just a moral imperative, but a collective responsibility that empowers us to build a more inclusive, compassionate and sustainable future for generations to come. That concludes today's segment of Ramadan Self-Improvement Challenge. Thank you for joining me on this enlightening journey. Tomorrow, we will explore the significance of authenticity, a treat essential for being true to oneself and genuine in interactions with others. Remember to show your support by subscribing to my channel, giving the video a thumbs up and sharing your insights in the comment section below. Until we meet again tomorrow, Assalamu Alaikum!